What's up guys, this is Sunny, back with another video. Today real quick I'm gonna show with you guys my budget under $300 Intel Hackintosh. And the reason I built this Hackintosh because some of you guys were asking me. You guys wanted me to build the Intel Hackintosh because you guys care about Intel QuickSync so much. All right, so I managed to pick up some parts. I did pick up this part a couple months back, but I was using the same setup in my Freenas build for my personal data backup and stuff. So that's why I didn't share with you guys uh, this exact setup. Now, today real quick, I'll show you guys how the system running the latest and greatest macOS Catalina 10.15.3. And also with this setup, you can use Final Cut, you can use Xcode, you can use DaVinci Resolve. Basically, you can do anything you want. Now remember, the motherboard I have and the CPU I have, I bought both of these used from OfferUp. So I paid for the motherboard and CPU $100. So the person who was selling Intel uh, Core i5 uh, 6400 CPU, uh, he also had a Gigabyte H110 motherboard. The only reason he didn't offer me uh, the motherboard because the motherboard uh, 3.0 USB port is broken and also uh, audio doesn't work so he really didn't offer me he really wanted to just throw this motherboard um, away and he really didn't care now he was talking about the motherboard and I was like does the motherboard work like uh, if can I boot with this motherboard and he's like yeah yeah you can so basically I paid him $20 extra I say you know what I'll give you $20 extra give me the motherboard and CPU now I don't care about uh, the audio interface because I do use my Scarlett Focusrite audio interface so I really didn't care about the audio interface and also USB 3.0 port is broken but still does work so I bought the motherboard and the CPU for hundred dollar and also I picked up a Pico power supply with power adapter now if you guys didn't watch the Pico power supply a uh, quick overview video I'll have a like link uh, up there or maybe in the video description so I'm using a 160 watt Pico power supply with a uh, 12 volt uh, 15 amp adapter for 65 watt TDP this Pico power supply works flawlessly so the CPU I have here i5 6400 CPU with the Pico power supply 660 watt best okay you can't go wrong with this setup and the reason people go with this smaller power supply like a Pico power supply like if you're planning on uh, building like a mini ITX uh, build then you know if you want to build something in like a smaller case then you can actually go with ATX power supply so this Pico power supply setup is like your one option you have and you can still build like a mini computer with this Pico uh, power supply now the RAM I have in this build this RAM is really cheap I picked up this I believe uh, 2666 megahertz RAMs uh, the exact brand and the model will be in the video description uh, it was around like $27 uh, 8 gig single stick and stock Intel cooler and also I'm using a SanDisk Ultra 2 SSD now the reason I'm using this SSD because I have this SSD laying around now I don't recommend you guys to pick up this SSD because this SSD goes for around like 35 to 40 dollars you can get some cheap SSD like 120 gig for around like 24 to 26 dollar I'll leave a link in the video description so you can check out also guys I don't have a case for this build because you guys can go with any computer case you want kindly most of the case I have these are ATX a full-size tower case or mid tower case so that's the reason uh, I didn't go with any case the main concern I had uh, I want to share with you guys basically how this budget setup works for like everyday work purpose so if you're someone who is planning on using like uh, iMovie Final Cut Pro or maybe DaVinci Resolve I did run some tests like Geekbench, uh, Cinebench and also Novabench so real quick let's just jump in and show you guys Alright guys, so real quick, let me just show you guys uh, a couple of the benchmark and also let's just start with about this Mac. So about this Mac, so you guys can see we are running Mac OS Catalina version 10.15.3 and also the processor uh, base clock is around 2.7 gigahertz, it's a quad core CPU. Okay, so you get four core, four thread and then uh, we have here 8 gig uh, 2133 megahertz now this RAM is uh, 2666 
but um, I need to enable the speed uh, from the virus. I forgot to do it. So that's why you guys uh, can see here only 21, 33 megahertz. And the graphics we have here, Intel HD graphics 530. All right, now starting with uh, Bruce X. So you guys can see I did uh, run uh, Bruce X 5K and this test is not for this uh, budget build. So basically we got uh, one minute and 51 second. Okay, so it took one minute and 51 seconds to finish a Bruce X test. Now mind you, Bruce X test is really small, it's not all that big, but uh, this is a 5K uh, render test. So keep that in mind. So again, the time was uh, one minute and 51 seconds. And the Geekbench score we have here, so you guys can see here, left hand side, uh, the CPU, Intel Core i5, uh, 6400 CPU. And then here we have single score, uh, 800, and the multi-core score, uh, 2616. Uh, not bad. And let's see, Nova Bench. So Nova Bench score, um, the CPU score around 511, RAM score, 179 the GPU score is around 155 so metal 3d um, you get around uh, 10 FPS and open CL around 217 uh, G flops and then if we look at the disk score uh, the write speed is around 214 and the read speed we got around 416 so the total score was around um, 908 and Cinebench R20. So you guys can see here Cinebench R20 multi core score was around uh, 1242. So we are basically right below Intel Core i7 uh, 4850HQ CPU. Uh, the CPU have a four core, eight thread. Now you guys have to understand uh, this CPU is a quad core CPU, there is no hyper threading. So just keep that in mind. And let me open Final Cut Pro real quick. Okay, so basically um, I don't own Final Cut Pro. So I every time I test, I just basically download Final Cut Pro. You get like uh, 30 days so you can try. Okay. Uh, so I have the Bruce X uh, test uh, 5K here and that's about it. But if you guys are planning on uh, using Final Cut Pro with this, then yes, you can take the advantage of the Intel Quick Sync with the uh, Final Cut Pro, right? So that's kind of like the big difference between like an AMD Hackintosh versus Intel Hackintosh because you get to take advantage of the built-in uh, Intel HD graphics so you can basically uh, you know, export uh, videos with H.264 codec and H.265 codec. Uh, you know, your uh, export time will be faster. Okay. Um, so Final Cut works perfect. Okay. I personally like iMovie guys because it's free. And if you're just starting a YouTube channel or you just want to edit like a basic video, you can use uh, iMovie free. You can download from App Store. You don't have to pay anything for iMovie you don't have to pay anything but for uh, Final Cut Pro you have to pay around $299 so I present thing if you're not going to use all the uh, functions and stuff just stick with iMovie it's free and you can't go wrong so iMovie works fine I have two projects here and I want to show you guys Xcode real quick so let me open Xcode Um, what do we have here? All right, so basically I have this app just for testing guys. It's not really a fully done app just for testing purpose. So basically I have my uh, YouTube uh, logo here and then if you click on the subscribe uh, button right here, it will take you to uh, my YouTube channel. So let me click play here and the emulator will open 
All right, here we go. Now keep in mind I'm recording right now with uh, QuickTime Player, so CPU is kind of busy right now. All right, so, all right, so you guys can see my uh, mini uh, test app right here. So I have my YouTube logo right here, and then there's like a subscribe button. So if I click on the subscribe button, I uh, basically will take me to my YouTube channel. Like a continue. All right, right there. Simple as that, and you guys can see if I go to video, you know, I can play a video, whatever. Yeah, it's really cool, right? All right, so let me go back and we can actually close the emulator right now. All right, so yes, Xcode does work. Uh, if you guys are Android developer and you want to install uh, Android Studio, Android Studio should work also. Now, there is a cool software here, Mac. X video converter pro right so let's put it this way uh, maybe you're confused and uh, you don't know if your uh, uh, Intel quick sync is working so you guys can see here you can download this uh, app right here then you can check this part here Intel AMD Nvidia just just click here and then you'll see uh, hardware encoding supported so that's mean intel hg graphic is working so with this application you can really check and see if your uh intel quick sync is working okay so intel quick sync is working so yeah guys that should be it i just wanted to show you guys uh how this system is performing if you guys want to see like a uh, full installation guide uh then uh, give this video a thumbs up and also like so i can show you guys uh, for the audio, I'm using uh, Scarlett 2x2, uh, two two, okay? Uh, so, like I say, uh, this motherboard audio is not working, so I'm just audio using an audio interface, so right now it's working fine. All right. All right, guys, that should be it. See you guys next time.